Hey everybody, I'm Boops Kelly. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Challenge accepted. I am bringing you the top five best Meghan Markle looks from this list. So many of you in the comments have said or encouraged me or challenged me to provide a list of some of her best looks. Now this is not comprehensive. There are more looks that I thought were okay or were even great. The thing is, as I've said before, I used to incorporate good looks from her or outfits that I thought were great even if they didn't suit the occasion because they were worn well or looked nice in almost every video, like way back. These videos are super old and not as good a quality. They weren't the best, but I kind of ran out of good looks. I wasn't gonna repeat the same looks every single video or cycle back through them, that would be silly. But it's been enough time now, it's been many months. I have a little list with some more times that I thought she did it right that I will do in a future video. If you guys enjoyed today's video and you would like another one, you have to tell me in the comments and you have to click the like button so that I know you want another one. We're gonna start at number five. This is nothing special, but that's part of why it worked so well. The first outfit of her and Prince Harry's 16-day trip through Australia, Tonga, Fiji, and New Zealand, Meghan Markle wore a lovely white sheath dress by Aussie designer Karen Gee, or is it G? Tell me in the comments. This dress was called the Blessed Dress. She later went to the zoo in Sydney, and she wore a Martin Grant beige trench coat on top, from the Designers Resort 2019 collection. And later she changed into a pair of Rothy's The Point Flats as she and Harry went for, it looks like a walkabout. So this dress was very, very successful and the look overall, very, very successful. She has on very minimal amounts of jewelry here. Her hair is styled nicely. I would have loved if the part was slightly askew and not directly in the center, but you know, I'll take it. The hairstyle in general is quite nice. Dress itself looks to be fitted really, really well. There's no spot that looks like it's not working. It fits her shoulders, it fits her bust, it fits her waist, and its hem is at a perfect spot. This location for a hem for her is really good because it actually hits her at one of the thicker points of her calves, which helps prevent her legs from looking too twiggy. And it's also not right at the knee. You don't necessarily wanna hem things exactly at a joint. It tends to look a little bit odd at times. But as you can see here, the waistline, so it's just a seam going across here. We don't have any belts. We don't have any messy tie belts. We don't have any puckering or anything like that going on from a bad bra. We can't even see the bra win, winning. Oh my gosh, what do you know? She can do it. That proves that she can do it, which makes it all the more annoying when she doesn't wear the right type of bra. But anyway, you can see here where the waistline seam is. It's actually a bit lower than some of the other, you know, like tie belts or waistbands that we've seen her in. When she wears high-waisted pants, those giant man pants, they are up so much higher than where this seam is. This seam location helps to elongate her torso just a tad. It just helps to give the illusion that she has a little bit more room to her upper body. If the seam was up higher, it would make her torso look even shorter. And those types of placements for her body type can also make things look wider. So it's at a really great spot right there. Now, of course, some of the publications were saying that there was already a baby bump visible. I'm not sure that I would necessarily call that a baby bump at that point, but you guys have to tell me in the comments what you think. It's also not very wrinkly. It looks just really nice and polished. As for the shoes, she's just wearing a pair of nude heels. I really like these. They do not look too big for once. The worst part of this was the clinging on to Harry, but it didn't happen the whole time from the pictures that I can see. And when she took the picture with the people, she stayed a little bit too far off to the side, which makes you look singled out and it can draw attention to you in a photograph. So that was poor etiquette for that situation. She should have moved closer to the group for the photo. So it was a bit awkward in this picture here. But other than that, the rest of this was really successful. I'm not a huge fan of the trench because it has a lot of extra visual weight around the shoulders and the chest area, which she doesn't necessarily benefit from. As we decided in a previous video, it's shove, shove, scrunch, 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 trudge. That's the procedure for the trench coat wearing. But I don't love the trench. Part of the reason I've figured out why I don't love trenches on her is that they all fit just a tad bit too long. Now, Meghan Markle is not as short as some of you guys think. I am just barely five feet tall. She is like five, six at least, for sure. I've spent a lot of time around men who are Harry's height and even taller, closer to like Prince William's height or even taller. And even with heels on, I am never at their shoulders. Meghan Markle is regularly 
at Harry's shoulder height or higher. So she's definitely like 5'6", for sure, I, in my opinion. You guys leave it in the comments what you think. Maybe I'll make a poll to see what the consensus is. But since there's there's conflicting reports online that she's somewhere between 5'5 five five and 5'7", some have even said closer to 5'8", and she's also not that much shorter than Catherine, the Princess of Wales, when they were both wearing heels, standing near one another, they were actually pretty similar in height. So I would definitely say she's like a little bit taller than some of you guys think. But she's still a little short for some of the clothes that she chooses. And these trenches just look absurdly long on her sometimes, which can shorten her visually, make her look shorter than she is. And they're just not a very flattering choice. They don't look very professional, especially when you scrunch up the sleeves like this. And they add a lot more weight to her upper body than she needs, which then in turn, makes her look more, um, you know, boxy and just don't do any favors for her proportions. Something that would would be something like an A-line coat, coachman coats, princess cuts, things like that would really balance her proportions. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Here in the flats, I have no problem with her popping on flats, although I would say like nude or white would have looked far better than this. And smaller steps. These steps are just huge and they look bad and you know, it's making her dress right up and so she needs to just take slightly smaller steps. Next up at number four is this best pantsuit I've ever seen her wear. This is a Givenchy pantsuit and she wore it to watch sports at a park in Dublin. And I'm not 100% behind her wearing a designer to go to a more casual athletic event. It seems a bit out of place, but the suit itself is perfect for her body type. And let me explain why, because I'm sure this one is going to be a bit polarizing. Some of you are going to disagree with me strongly, and that's okay. This was right after she wore the terrible Roland Moray boat neck, napkin down the front, cookie cutter bra showing. This was right after that. She changed into this Givenchy pantsuit. She wore a Givenchy 2G buckle belt. She carried a Givenchy GV3 frame bag going for $375 for the belt and $2,450 for the bag. Wow. And then she wore Sarah Flint's Perfect 100 pumps with this suit. So this was a very expensive outfit. And again, not really very fitting for the occasion. They were watching cricket. They were talking with athletes and kids and you know, out on the grass. It just don't understand why she chose this outfit for this occasion. So that part of it's not so great. But the outfit itself is great and very balancing for her body type. The suit jacket, the blazer here, it does have shoulder pads, but they are not extending beyond her natural shoulder and they are not high up, meaning they're fitting her very nicely here. And the fact that they're not over dramatic or flaring up or like puckering up makes them acceptable. I know a lot of you will think she doesn't need to or she should stay away from shoulder pads, and this is true, but the fact that this blazer itself is kind of boxy allows it to work okay here because it's kind of leaning into the boxiness a little bit, but then it's pulled back into balance by this deep V-shaped lapel. So the lapel draws your eyes down to the lower point of her torso. It draws your eyes down to where the pants are at, that mid-rise level, which elongates her torso and her upper body, and it brings this sort of a V-shape visual that helps give the illusion that her waist is tucked in more narrow in there. So it enhances the appearance or illusion of a better waistline, while also providing some elongation to her upper body. And the fact that the pants are not high rise is exactly what she needs to accomplish the same visual, a longer torso, more balanced proportions. The pants are neither wide leg or skinny fit. These are just nice tapered straight leg trousers. They are tapered just a tad in towards the ankle, so they're not true straight leg. They are the perfect amount of volume for her trousers because they allow her legs to look very, very balanced for her upper body. Her legs are not looking super skinny and twiggy and they're also not like really widening and shortening her the way they do when she wears those really big, huge, voluminous pants. They are a perfect pair of pants for her. I like the ankle length of them and I think that if she wore flats it would have been perfect for this or even some trainers, some white trainers out on this field would have been just fine. But these pumps are maybe a little bit much but honestly 
they are fine for this outfit in general, just not necessarily for the occasion. So this pantsuit, although it was absurdly expensive and maybe not worn in the right occasion, did provide excellent balance to her silhouette and is a really good example of how, regardless of your proportions and your body type, you can lean into different silhouettes and play with your clothing and the different fit of your clothing without it throwing your proportions off because this blazer paired up with like really skinny pants or really wide leg pants would look insane. If she paired it up with wide leg pants, she would look like a ginormous rectangle. It would be disastrous. If she paired it up with very, very skinny pants or like skinny jeans, she would look like a box on stilts. These pants provided the right amount of balance. Coming in at number three, we have one of my favorite looks on her because you guys know I absolutely adore yellow and she is wearing this beautiful yellow dress to the Your Commonwealth Youth Challenge reception held at the Marlborough House in this bright yellow sheath dress paired with nude heels. It is by Brandon Maxwell. In the five engagements leading up to this, she was wearing really, really muted colors. So this was one of the like earliest times that we saw her in something really, really bright. And a lot of the articles were like, oh, she's taking a out of Queen Elizabeth's playbook wearing these bright beautiful colors and maybe that's part of what like annoyed her was that some of the press would sort of almost like give credit for her style choices to other people in the royal family but that's just gonna come with the territory no matter who you are if you're joining that small tiny little group of very very famous and recognizable people who are mostly beloved by the public then people are going to draw those parallels and even though it might suck that she felt like she didn't get credit for choosing something on her own, if she would have just stuck with it and kept going, she would have carved out a clear and identifiable style of her own that then years later people would credit her as inspiration for other people. So if she would have just stuck it out and let that happen and let it be or even accept it as a bit of an honor or let it play in her favor, like that she's showing respect and tribute to these other people who have led through their position in the royal family, it would have been fine. Here, I really appreciate her hairstyle. It is pulled back in a nice bun. Everything's away from her face. There's no tendrils hanging down and she has tiny dainty little earrings. This is perfect for her. The neckline is not necessarily my favorite for her because it doesn't necessarily like elongate her or anything like that, but it's not full blown boat neck. So that's helpful. In fact, the position where the ne neckline and shoulder fabric is, is a little bit slimming for her shoulder line because it breaks things up enough, but it still has a little room to it. And it feels delicate, the cut of this neckline on her. It would have been maybe a little bit nicer if it was just regular width, the way the first one was, the white dress was, but had maybe a little bit of a V-neck or a cowl neck or something like that might've been a little bit nicer. But overall, I'll take it. I thought it was really great. The worst part of this look was the fact that it got really, really wrinkly and her shoes looked too big. So that's something that's just gonna happen, you know, with these types of dresses sometimes throughout a long day. They probably had quite the journey to get out there. But I mean, there are precautions she could have taken to try to help reduce the amount of wrinkles by using certain wrinkle resistant sprays and maybe even bringing a steamer with to like kind of try to get out any wrinkles before you do an event. But of course you have to make allowances sometimes. And in this situation, despite it being quite wrinkly, um, the rest of the look is pulled together really nice. So that's something that I give a complete pass to because everything else works just fine. The length of the dress is really great. Again, hitting her at one of the wider points of her calf, allowing her legs to not look super twiggy and too thin for her body overall. The fact that it has that slit in the back, it maybe could have had like a kick pleat put in or something like that to just be a little bit better perhaps and maybe it's a tad bit too tight especially around the like waist area it might be a little bit too tight which contributes to wrinkles forming because the fabric kind of rides up and bunches up when something's a little too tight so that could have been improved upon but overall I really love the bright color I absolutely love the fact that her hair is tied back like this really nice and sleek and professional the small earrings all of these things are working together really nicely the heels even work nicely although they could probably stand to be a little bit shorter maybe so I declare this to be a success. It is a good outfit. It looks good on her. She didn't have some of those fashion fails and faux pas that we have seen from her. It was a really good choice overall. Now, when it comes to her behavior on that day, it's a totally different story. Apparently, she was glaring and kind of cranky, and there's several memes out there of when the attention wasn't on her had kind of a sour look on her face. But regardless, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the fashion wins, 
Which leads me to number two on this list, the handbag model dress. I only call it that because here in this picture she looks like she's modeling a handbag to sell it which they're not supposed to be doing those types of things in the royal family. She shouldn't have done that. She should have avoided that pose at all costs because it literally looks like she was trying to get a merch shot with that handbag there. But anyway, this dress is a complete success for her. The styling of it, not so much, but let's talk about the dress. This is a black halo Jackie O dress, it's a belted sheath dress that she wore to the reception for women's empowerment at the Royal Aeronautical Society in central London. This was a whole month before her wedding. So this just goes to show how much faith the royal family had in her and how many bones they were throwing her and Harry, that they had her doing engagements before she even married Harry. That's pretty unprecedented. The dress is available in bright blue, deep red, white, and black, and it usually retails for like $3.75, so it's also a little bit more attainable or affordable for some people. So the length of this dress is pretty good. It's again hitting her at a wider point of her calf, which helps her legs look more balanced. The dress overall I really like. The simple, solid looks, as you can tell, are always more successful on her. They're not only elongating and slimming, but they help draw attention away from that shorter torso and proportions. If ever you're somebody who has slightly out of balanced proportions, it just happens sometimes if your torso is a little bit longer or shorter in proportion to your legs, then sticking with darker or black colors or just solid colors in general, any, even bright solid colors, just monochrome, all one color, helps to avoid attention being drawn to those proportions being a little bit out of balance, if you will. It's very, very common, by the way, too, to have, feel like you have short legs or feel like you have a short torso or a really long torso. That's really, really common. Lots and lots of people deal with it. And monochrome dressing is a great way to draw attention away from that. Similarly, it's also very slimming. So if you feel like you have, you know, maybe a bit of a belly or something like that, or you don't feel as confident in certain cuts, doing it in monochrome can help you feel more comfortable and can just look a little bit nicer. In part because it avoids chopping up your vertical line in in any way or creating any sort of widening points due to a color change. My favorite part about this dress is the asymmetry on the chest and shoulder area. This is really slimming and it distracts from the width of her shoulder line. Not that the width of her shoulder line is bad, this just distracts from it some to make it not dominate her silhouette and dominate her figure overall. These little bits of the collar hanging off along the shoulder line is not my favorite. I don't particularly love that, especially in black. It kind of just looks like extra fabric just kind of dangling there. So I don't love that about the dress, but overall it's really great. We don't have any like panty lines showing or bras showing through here. The belt is not my favorite, but it does come with the dress. It's part of the dress. I think she should have pulled it down a little bit. It looks like she perhaps needed one size bigger because there is some wrinkling around the waistline, but we can't notice it as much because it is in black. So that's good. I give it a pass. But because there's some bunching around the waistline, I should have bought one size up and had a tailor take it in where needed so that it fit her a little bit nicer. But that's okay. It's not going to be perfect every time. If she had done that, though, she would have been able to place the belt and the waistline just a little bit lower to help elongate that torso and avoid the bunching that we see. Also, her jewelry looks just fine here. She's got just small, dainty little earrings. We're not seeing tons of, you know, noisy and overly expensive bracelets and rings and all this extra stuff. We're just seeing some dainty little earrings. That's perfect and professional. She should have had her hair pulled back sleek the way we saw in the last one with the yellow dress instead of having the tendrils hanging down because it just gives a more evening vibe and not so much a professional outing vibe. So if she would have had her hair pulled back nicer, that would have been a win as well. The handbag, I have no opinions on, but the shoes. This comes in at number two despite having the worst shoes ever. These shoes are so noisy and so terrible. They're tied sloppily as usual, but the ankle strap here just chunks things up at the bottom and they just don't look nice. They don't match the vibe of the dress. What would have matched would have been a chunky heel, a block heel in a regular pump in black. That's what she should have worn. This was a bad, silly choice. But regardless, the dress overall was pretty great. On to number one, one of the most successful looks I ever saw her in. You guys, get ready. It's from Carolina Herrera. What do you know? She wore this to the Royal County of Berkshire Polo Club in 2018. 
She was there to support Prince Harry as he played in a charity polo match. She stepped out in this fit and flare dress by Carolina Herrera. That was 2,357 pounds really expensive, overpriced, but it's a denim midi dress that really fit her nicely. She coordinated it with a rattan clutch bag, which is terrible choice. Horrible choice. She should have gone with just like navy pumps here for sure, but the dress itself is really, really great. The skirt has a little bit too much volume for her and it's just a tad bit too long. If it was hemmed just a little bit shorter, her legs would have looked just slightly less um, twiggy and out of proportion if there was slightly less volume in the skirt and or hemmed just a tad. It just would have been a better balance overall. But in general, this just looks really, really nice. The v-neck helps to elongate the neckline a little bit here. The waistline is not too high and the sleeves come all the way out. They're like basically like cap sleeves here and they look really nice. I mean, it doesn't necessarily slim down her shoulder line at all, but the dress itself is in a dark color. So it kind of has that effect anyway. And again, with that dark color, it's not drawing attention to any sort of wrinkling that may or may not be there or any sort of waistline issues or out of proportion, you know, short torso. None of that is being highlighted in this dress. Now, whether or not denim was an appropriate option, I don't know. You know, she was going to watch a polo match. I think that it's okay. She wasn't on an official engagement she was just there to watch him play so I think a denim dress is okay although there were some some articles I remember at the time saying that it was a questionable choice doing a denim dress it's not the done thing amongst the royal family circles which I totally get but I think in this setting it was all right she should not have done the nude cream colored they don't even match handbag and shoes don't know why she went for that but overall I say this dress is a win it's a solid option despite the price tag her hair is pulled back all of the way. I don't see any tendrils hanging down here, you guys. It's a nice bun just off to the back and she's wearing small earrings. Her makeup is far too dark for this. Other than that, it was all okay. So while she has had many a fail, she has also had a handful of successes. The problem is, or the caveat here, is that a lot of the times that she wears something that looks good, it's not fitting for the event in any way, shape or form. Anytime she's not wearing something that has some sort of fashion faux pas, it's like, why did she choose it for that event? Anytime that she's wearing something that's otherwise objectively just fine for the event, she has some sort of faux pas, like showing her bra or her bra is like wearing some stupid strapless bra underneath it, whatever it is. If she could just like come together and maybe just hire a stylist, I think things would be okay sometimes. But then I see something like this that just completely destroys my hope. Leave it in the comments if you enjoyed today's video and please click the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. I'll be sure to put out some polls to see which one you liked best out of this bunch. But if you have a different outfit that's your favorite that you saw on Meghan Markle, please leave it in the comments. I would love some more ideas to examine. If you guys do want a part two, then I'll have even more on my list to go through. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you in the next video. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye.